in this lesson, we'll be solving a solution to a non-homogeneous difference equation. So in the previous lesson, we saw how we solved a non-homogeneous difference equation for where the right hand side was a constant. So now we're going to look for, we're going to solve for when the right hand side is not a constant, but it's an exponential exponential function. So here's a summary of the particular integrals which you have to know for this course. So if on the right hand side of the given is a constant, therefore your particular integral will be a constant. If you are given a linear function, your particular integral will be a linear function. It's just the general form of a linear function, but without the actual numbers for the gradient and the intercept. If I'm given a parabola, therefore the particular integral will be the form of the parabola, which is ax squared plus bx plus c. And similarly, if you're given a cubic function, the particular integral will be ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus g. And lastly, if I'm given an exponential function, the particular integral will be of the form some constant multiplied by n to the power of x, where n, we will see how to solve this. So an example of how you will know that it's a constant if it's the right hand side is equal to five. And here, if your right hand side is equal to, let's say five k. And here, if your RHS is something like k squared, and here, let's say it's k cubed, and here, if your right hand side is something like um, 2 to the power of k, this is when you know that this, you must choose this as the particular integral. If it's a linear function, then you must pick this. Then if it's a parabola, you must pick this and also similarly for the others as well. So the example which you're going to look at in this lesson, is going to include or involve the exponential particular integral. So it's given as y sub k plus 2 minus 7 y sub k plus 1 plus 10 y sub k is equal to 12 multiplied by 4 to the power of k. Given initial conditions that y0 is equal to y1, which is equal to zero. Right. Now let's see. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to first solve the homogeneous part. Okay. So how do I solve the homogeneous part? By equating the right hand side to be equal to zero. That is what we mean by solving the homogeneous part. Okay. And then after doing that, I'm going to have y sub k plus 2 minus 7 y sub k plus 1 plus 10 y sub k is equal to 0. Right. Therefore, I'm going to assume a trial solution or an answer. y sub k equal to a lambda to the power of k. This means that y sub k plus 1 will be equal to a lambda k lambda to the power of 1. And y sub k plus 2 will be equal to a lambda k lambda squared. Now I take these terms and I put them in this difference equation over there. Therefore, if I do that, I'm going to have a lambda k lambda squared minus 7 a lambda k lambda plus 10 a lambda k equal to zero. If you check, I have a common factor 
of um, a lambda k, a lambda k, and a lambda k. So I'm going to pull it out as a common factor. If I do that, I'm left with lambda squared minus 7 lambda plus 10 is equal to 0. Whereas we know that a lambda k mustn't be equal to 0. Therefore, it means that lambda squared minus 7 lambda plus 10 must be equal to 0. If I do that, I'm therefore going to have, so I'm going to factorize this into lambda minus 5 and lambda minus 2. If you don't know how to factorize, feel free to use the quadratic formula. This means that lambda 1 equal to 5 or lambda 2 is equal to 2. Therefore, my complementary function is equal to a lambda 1 to the power of k plus b lambda 2 to the power of k. If I plug in the value of lambda 1 and lambda 2, since I've solved them, I'm going to have a multiplied by 5 to the power of k plus b multiplied by 2 to the power of k. This is my complementary function. Now I'm going to solve for the particular integral. Right. So my difference equation, if I can write it, was given as 7y sub k plus 2. Okay, the 7 is not here. And then the 7 is on this one. Minus 7y sub k plus 1. And then plus 10y sub k. Is equal to, let's see, 12 multiplied by 4 to the power of k. Well, there's something I need to realize here. Back to the set of particular integrals which I gave to you. I said if you are given something like 2 to the power of k, in this case, you're given um, 12 times 4 to the power of k, which is the same form as this one. This means that I'm going to put this, I'm going to pick this as my particular integral. So my particular integral is going to be y particular sub k equal to some constant. Okay, already we have a, let's use c, multiplied by 4 to the power of k. So this 4 here is this one. So basically what you do, just come to this particular integral and you give 12 an arbitrary constant c, but then you keep the base. The base is important, okay? So therefore, I've got y sub k, but I also need to know the particular integral for k plus 1. So I'll do the same way in which I was doing for the complementary function. So it'll be c multiplied by 4 to the power of k plus 1, which is equal to c multiplied by 4 to the power of k multiplied by 4 to the power of 1. The particular integral for k plus 2 is equal to c multiplied by 4 to the power of k plus 2, which is equal to c multiplied by 4 to the power of k multiplied by 4 squared, which is 16. Okay. I'm going to take these particular integrals and I put them in the given equation as it is. If I do that, I'm going to have c multiplied by 4 to the power of k multiplied by 16 minus 7 multiplied by c multiplied by 4 to the power of k multiplied by 4 and then plus 10 multiplied by c multiplied by 4 to the power of k equal to 12 multiplied by 4 to the power of k. Well, I can simplify this. This is 16c times 4 to the power of k. 7 times 4 is 28. So I'm going to have minus 28c times 4 to the power of k. Then plus 10. 10c um, times 4 to the power of k equals 12 multiplied by 4 to the power of k. Well, Looks like I've got the same terms here. These terms look alike. So let me pull out c times 4 to the power of k out for now. I'm going to have 16 minus 28 plus 10 equal to 12 multiplied by 4 to the power of k. 
from this, you can see that the fourth, the fourth K, and the fourth, the fourth K, the counter. Then here I've got C multiplied by, if you compute, compute that, we're going to get negative two, then it's equal to 12. Therefore, dividing both sides by negative two, it turns out that C is equal to negative six. Therefore, my particular integral, which I picked as this over here, so I'm going to come and put the C that I got into this to find my particular integral. Therefore, my particular integral is equal to C, which you said is negative 6, right? So it's negative 6 multiplied by 4 to the power k. So now I found my particular integral. So now, therefore, the final solution, y sub k, is equal to the sum of the complementary function plus the particular integral. Therefore, if I do that, I solved for the complementary function to be a times 5 to the power k plus b times 2 to the power k. And then I now found the particular integral to be minus 6 times 4 to the power of k. Okay. But I wrote that. I was given initial conditions, right? That y not equal to y1, which is equal to 0. This means that, remember this is subscript, and on the subscript we've got k. Now what this means is that when k is equal to 0, y sub k is equal to 0. And when k is equal to 1, y sub k is also equal to 0. Well, I'm going to replace these initial conditions into this expression, and I'm going to solve for a and b, and that will be my answer. Now, let's do that. Well, I'm going to put 0 here. So I'm going to have 0 equal to a multiplied by 5 to the power of 0 plus b multiplied by 2 to the power of 0 minus 6 multiplied by 4 to the power of 0. If I do that, I'm going to, okay, these terms will give me 1 because we know that any number raised to the power of 0 is equal to 1, right? So this means that 0 equal to a plus b minus 6. Or we can say that a plus b equal to 6. And this is our first equation. Now I'm going to put the second condition which where I see yk, I'm going to put 0. But where I see k, I'm going to put 1. If I do that, I'm going to have 0 is equal to a multiplied by 5 to the power of 1 plus b multiplied by 2 to the power of 1 minus 6 multiplied by 4 to the power of 1. This means that 0 equal to 5a plus 2b and 6, 12, 18, 24. Well, this means that 5a plus 2b is equal to 24, and this is equation number 2. But already, I now I've got two equations and two unknowns, so I can solve for a and b. So in the first equation, I can make um, b subject. This means that b is equal to 6 minus a. Then I can take this, and then I put it in 2. Right, so when I see b, I'm going to put 6 minus a. So 5a plus 2 multiplied by 6 minus a is equal to 24. Therefore, 5a plus 2 multiplied by 6, which is equal to 12. 2 multiplied by negative a is negative 2a, and this is equal to 24. What is 5a minus 2a? It's 3a equal to, then what is 24 minus 12? Is just 12. And if I do that, I'm going to solve for a by dividing both sides by 3. Therefore, a is 12 divided by 3, which is equal to 4. But we say that b is equal to 6 minus a. Therefore, b, which was equal to 6 minus a, b is therefore equal to 6 minus 4, which is equal to 2. Now I solve for the value of, of a and the value of b. And I'm going to put them in this expression over here. Now, if I do that, let me just pull this up for space. 
if I do that, I now have my final solution as yk equal to where I see a, I'm going to put 4. So this is 4 multiplied by 5 to the power of k, and then b we said is 2. So it's plus 2 multiplied by 2 to the power of k minus 6 multiplied by 4 to the power of k, right? And here I'm multiplying the same base, so I can keep the base and add the exponent. So if you want, or if you wish, you can further write this as y sub k is equal to 4 multiplied by 5 to the power of k. Let me erase this one. Plus 2 to the power of k plus 1 minus 6 multiplied by 4 to the power of k. And this is your final answer. So this is what you must find as your answer after solving the difference equation. So here the first part was obtained by solving the homogeneous part and this part was found by solving the non-homogeneous part, which is the particular integral. Thank you for watching.